there's a computer modelling software known as DEM, which is extremely useful for understanding the interaction between soil particles and machinery. Yet worldwide, there are only a few groups using it for tillage research. That's right, yeah, so the software we use is by EDEM Solutions and it's a discrete element method simulation. So it uses discrete particles that um, interact with each other under physical mathematical laws. Um, and uh, yeah, these particles need to be calibrated to behave like a bulk material such as soil. And by using simulated particles that behave like real soil particles, the University of South Australia's Agricultural Machinery Research and Design Centre is making engineering breakthroughs. But we've really um, kind of led the way into using it for agricultural machines and particularly tillage and soil amelioration machines. What Dr Saunders and his research team are doing is finding engineering solutions for soil constraints, a major issue for Australian agriculture and a key area of investment for the Grains Research and Development Corporation. Yeah, so we've been involved in a range of GRDC funded projects. First of all, the Soils West looking at uh, inversion ploughing with the mobile ploughs and also one-way disc ploughs. And then moving on to the subsoil compaction uh, with inclusion plates. And then we've got uh, two components in the Southern Sandy Soils project, which is led by the CSRO. That's one component looking at um, amelioration and another component looking at mitigation. Mustafa Akkal is a member of the Design Centre's research team and as part of his postdoctoral research, currently funded by GRDC, he's running DEM simulations for both the Sandy Soils and Soils West projects. Simulations that require modelling of machines such as rotary spaders and components such as ripper tines with inclusion plates. Uh, the first thing we need is, uh, of course, the solid model of the tool. Uh, we can obtain it from manufacturer or we can go to the field and physically scan it using some uh, 3D scanners. And then uh, we need the soil from the field. The field sample is taken from the site where the ripper inclusion plate will be tested. And an angle of repose test is conducted on the soil so that the DEM's simulated soil particles can be calibrated. We will have a low angle for the dry soil and we have a high angle for the cohesive soil. So as you can see on the right hand side, on the DEM simulation results, we basically generated the same angles, which is 44.2 degree for the cohesive soil and 28.8 degree for the non-cohesive or the gutless soil. With the calibration done, the simulation is run. In this case, it's a deep river tine with an inclusion plate operating at 7 km per hour at a depth of 600 mm. In this video, uh, simulation video, you can see the performance of a deep ripper inclusion plate and how it basically incorporates the top 100 mm soil. So as you can see, it's not really doing a good job at, at high speed. A modified inclusion plate is added to the simulation. At the same speed and depth, it does a better job and incorporates material at depth. The real thing can be built in the workshop. What we found from our simulations, or DEM sim simulations, was that uh, as we increase the forward speed of operation, the amount of material that's included behind this plate actually reduces, especially down at the depth, deeper in the profile. Um, so what we did was we made a modification. Um, we had an extension plate here that bolts onto the back of the inclusion plate. So the simulation showed that this sidewall length was important, especially at speeds around seven kilometers an hour. And we took this uh, inclusion plate to the field, did some validation and found that that was actually the case, that more material was included deep in the profile with a longer inclusion plate. And this had minimum effect on the draft force adding, by adding this um, extension. The percentage increase in incorporated material was significant. Yeah, so we found that by increasing the length of the inclusion plate by two times, we were able to vary about 15 or 16 percent more soil um, to the depth of the inclusion plate. This was highlighted in the simulation initially, so we tried the different lengths in the simulation space, uh, and that showed between 11 and 12 percent increased burial. We then went to validate that in the field, and the results were 15 to 16 percent more soil buried to the, the bottom of the inclusion plate at seven kilometres an hour. As well as amelioration, 
Mitigation solutions are being investigated. Simulations of sowing are being studied to find ways to keep non-wetting soil and herbicides out of seed furrows. The GRDC funded James Barr's postgraduate studies into DEM simulation of seeding machinery. Uh, so here we have a standard knife point closer plate system um, and a paired row system. Um, and what we can see is the closer plate system is dragging topsoil uh, which may contain herbicides, uh, non-wetting soil and um, drier soil in general into the seed zone. Here you can see the uh, lighter coloured particles which represents the topsoil being dragged down below the closer plate um, and in moving into the seed zone. Here we have the paired row opener which is um, effectively excluding this lighter particles or topsoil from the seed zone. DEM simulations help the research team investigate the forces involved, how different soil layers move and the performance of the machinery. Yeah, we're looking at the mechanics of a whole range of different seeding systems um, and looking at how we can create the best soil environment for the seed in emergence. A lot of the amelioration and tillage equipment in Australia was designed and developed overseas. Jack Dibiol believes this engineering research could turn that around. The knowledge we've developed so far in the projects has been about understanding how the machine works, but to really make full use of this knowledge is really to take it to how can we optimise the design to then maximise the response in the field and maybe also looking at how the impact of a design change might affect the cost aspect, which is then essentially the cost effectiveness. So I really see uh, an opportunity now to actually apply this knowledge and engage with the manufacturing industry to help bring machines that are better adapted to the situations here in, in Australia. Uh, knowing that a lot of the machines used in uh, subsoil amelioration are direct imports of, uh, from overseas and these machines are being used in very different ways. So there's definitely uh, an opportunity for us to actually have an impact there. There's also a positive impact on the time needed to deliver these research outcomes, with computer modelling condensing weeks of field work into days at the uni. Yeah, so I think with most of the machines, there are a lot of variables and a lot of settings that can affect the way the machines operate. Um, to understand all of those settings is, is a complex process. Uh, and if you go to the field, you tend to test single variables. Um, in the simulation space, we can mix and match those settings and those variables of the machine and see what effect it's likely to have on the soil uh, movement, soil mixing, um, soil behaviour. And what this uh, DM simulation is uh, allowing us to do is to actually change that, to put in a lot more science, a lot more guided sort of development, and also to have it happen a lot faster, and to be a lot more um, quick, quicker at reacting to the needs out there in industry. So potentially that's a, a new way of operating. And therefore growers end up with better machines, better products that they can use to better improve their soils uh, long term. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.